Do you think this animation is really hard to make? Think again. Keep watching this video and I'm gonna show you all the steps, the tools and the colors that I'm using so you'll be able to recreate this in less than 30 minutes. Are you ready? Grab your iPad, your pencil and let's start by creating a new canvas. You can use any canvas size that you want. Here I'll be using a 3000 by 4000 pixel size with a P3 color profile. Before we start animating, we have to draw this takeaway cup that will be the star of this show. This won't take long, but if you already know how to do this and you're only here for the animation process, just skip to the minute 650. Back to the drawing, turn on the drawing guide with the symmetry option and let's start the body of the cup. Before I draw the base that is rounded, I'll turn off the drawing assist layer option. By doing that, we make sure that the symmetry tool is no longer active on this particular layer. You can turn it back on anytime you want to. Then close the shape and fill it with color. Now, you want to create a new layer for the lid. Later in the animation process, it will be very important to have the lid on a separate layer. Before you start drawing, just remember to turn on the drawing assist option for the new layer. After I'm done, I'll create a new layer for the upper part of the lid. Of course, I could keep drawing on the same layer, but Right now, I just want to make the shading easier and faster. Remember about the drawing assist option, okay? We just talked about it. At this point, we have an object. Now, you want to alpha lock all the layers. You can either select that on the layer options or swipe two fingers on the layer name as I do here. Then turn off the drawing guide and you also need to turn off that drawing assist option on every layer. It will remain active even when the drawing guide is not. I also changed my background color to black just cause I like drawing things on black I guess. Then I'll select my recycled brush. This one is perfect for paper objects. By the way, this one is different from the recycled paper brush even though you can use that one too. My iPad screen looks like a mess right now so I'll do a quick cleanup. The struggle is real with this black background, trust me. Unfortunately, my camera stopped for a minute just when I made the cup color a little darker and moved the entire object a little bit lower on the screen. But these steps are so easy that I decided not to film them again. I hope that's okay for you guys. Now, we'll just use a medium brown to draw the shadows and obviously a lighter color for the lighting. I'm doing everything on the drawing layer, this is as easy as it gets and I'm sure you already know how to do this. Back to the brushes, if you do not own my essential or my complete brush packs, just use whatever texture brush you have or even an airbrush if you like that effect. I'm kind of avoiding that brushes cause I think they make the final work look a little bit artificial and even kitsch. Maybe I'm being too harsh here, I don't know. I guess it's just a matter of preferences really, so don't mind me on this one. You do you. For the lid, I'll be using my favorite recycled paper brush. You guys, if I had to keep a single Procreate brush from everything I own, it would definitely be this one. Not saying this because it's made by me, even though I feel that I really nailed it with this brush, but I can use it for pretty much anything. Sketching, drawing, adding texture, shading, transparencies, highlights, you name it. If you do own this brush, I strongly suggest you to play around with its thickness because it's really versatile. I especially like that it's designed to behave as a 2B pencil when it's really thin. Back to the lid shading, there's not much to be said here, I'm just alternating black and white to build up the volume. When you're doing the shading, always try to understand where the light is coming from and, even more important, the material of the object. This cup right here looks like a product photo, so in this case we have some powerful studio lights and the lid should be made of shiny plastic, so we have to keep both the shadows and the highlights strong. On the contrary, on the paper cup, we had to draw both the shadows and the lights quite subtle because this is how the paper behaves under studio lights. After a while, you just know how different materials behave in different lighting situations. 
But when in doubt, always look for a good reference photo, or even better, try to observe the object if you have it around to understand how the light affects its surface and how you can translate that into your drawing. I hope I'm not overcomplicating this for you guys, but all these little things will make you better artist and will definitely elevate your art. I feel this lid took forever to be done, just cause I'm such a perfectionist. Anyway, now that it's finally ready, let's merge those two lid layers together. And who's ready to finally start this animation? Turn on the animation assist and set the paper cup layer as the background and the lid as the foreground. That means we'll draw the animation in between these two layers, you'll see in a second. Now, go select a basic drawing brush, I'm using the Studio Pen brush. Then, create a layer on top of the cup. Then, this is really important, change the blending mode of this layer from Normal to Overlay. It's so easy, just press on that N in the right side of the layer and choose Overlay instead. Now, just draw a tiny tiny drop just under the lid and that will be it for the first frame. For the second frame, create a new overlay mode layer and draw some more paint flowing from under the lid. Starting with our third frame, we really need to select our base layer, in this case the paper cup. We will keep this selection active until we complete the entire animation. After doing the selection, create the third frame and draw the red paint flowing even lower this time. We'll repeat this process again and again for the next 7 frames and with every new frame we'll draw the red paint flowing a little bit lower. I think this process is really easy to follow but if there's something you do not understand please leave a comment and I'll do my best to explain it to you. Just make sure that selection is still active and that you don't forget to change the blending mode of every new layer from normal to overlay. Ok, back to the animation, I have two options for you guys. If you're a beginner, you just want to keep this as short and easy as possible, so you will come to an end really soon. You will just keep the 7th frame red, and for the 8th and 9th frame, you will just fill the layers with red. On the animation assist setting menu, choose 4 frames per second and the A. Press play and enjoy your new amazing animation. If you feel more adventurous, as I did here, we'll add more colors into the animation starting with this 7th frame. After drawing the red paint on this frame, also add some bright pink drops just under the lid and we'll keep taking that pink down on the following frames. I feel that it might be a little bit easier here just to do all the drawing on the normal mode and put the layer on the overlay after you're done. Or you can just go to the settings on the animation assist menu and set the frame's opacity to your liking. On the 8th frame, You'll also add some white painting starting to flow. I think you already got the point, didn't you? With every new frame the colors are leaking a little bit lower on the paper cup. You can obviously make this animation as long or short as you want to and incorporate as many colors as you like. I think from this point the process is pretty clear. 
I'll write down on the screen the frame I'm currently working on, but I feel I would repeat myself again and again explaining it. I just want to make sure you really understand these steps here because they are the most important in this process and they are affecting every single frame. Completing this animation just won't be possible without these three things. The first one, you need to make sure the paper base is set as the background for this animation and the lid as the foreground. The second one, every new layer will be a new frame. You need to select the base layer, you know, the cup, and keep this selection active when drawing on every single frame. If you disable the selection by mistake, just go to the cup layer and select it again. We are doing this to make sure we are keeping the painting just on the cup and not around it or on the background. And the third one, you must make sure that all the layers, frames, except the paper cup and the lid, are on the overlay mode. Why are we using the overlay mode instead of the normal one? Well, the overlay blending mode will allow us to cover the object with colors, but it will also maintain our shading while doing that. I mean, it's kind of magic, isn't it? There are also so many blending modes in Procreate and I strongly suggest you to play around with each of them. To make things really easy for you to understand, let's just say that on the overlay mode you will be able to add colors and keep the values of the base layer, in our case this paper cup. The light colors will become brighter and the dark ones darker and also more saturated. You'll understand better once you get to paint more over the cup a little bit later in this animation process. Now, let's play some music and I'll be back in a few minutes to explain how to do a beautiful ending for this animation.
Okay, everyone, this had been fun, but now it's time for us to come to an end with this animation. I'm drawing the 16th frame. Depending on your animation design, you might be on your 157th. Good luck with that, by the way. I was thinking that this would look awesome like a loop animation, so we have to get to the way this cup looked on the beginning and also make this transition natural. I think our best option here is to just use the eraser with the same studio pen brush and start erasing some drops on top just under the lid, just the way we did with the paint. On the next 17 frame, we'll take the eraser shape lower so we'll be able to see even more of the original cup. I think this will look pretty nice on the final animation. Two more layers to go, we'll take that erase shape even lower on the cup so we get to see more and more of the original design. On the 20th layer, you can barely see some of the blue paint at the base of the cup. I know, that looks purple right now. It's the blending mode, I call it blue just cause that's the color I used. Before we finish this, you can pause the video whenever I'm showing my layers and compare them to yours. I think it would help you understand how the colors move in this animation. And we're almost there. Just create two more empty frames. Having a little pause will look good on the animation. Now, set 4 frames per second for the animation speed and press play and enjoy. You guys, I hope you love this project as much as I do. If you recreate this, please don't be a stranger, come say hi on Instagram and share your project with me. I always love to see your work. Thank you for watching and see you really soon with a new tutorial.